there is somebody who feels less comfortable up here than you. <laughs> a couple people this morning asked me, you're the one preaching today? And I said, no, I'm going to go up there though and I'm going to try and say a few words. When I was in about grade two, I think it was, uh, I lived in a small town, and there was only two rooms in the school, in the school grades one to six and seven to twelve. And we had a public speaking day, and I had a little poem I was supposed to say. It was about I forget the exact words, but it was about the dog that barks and the cat that meows, and we get wool from the lamb to make our sweater. And I was so nervous, I got all mixed up, and I talked about the dog that was meowing, and the, we got the wool from the cat. <laughs> my, my poor mother was mortified. So I hope you are not mortified. <laughs> so this morning, I want to talk a little bit about Cuba and uh, a little bit about giving. And... I am not going to be talking about money, or very little anyways, or about tithing, a, a different type of giving. Uh, there's a verse in Malachi that says we are to bring our whole tithes to the storehouse. And so I'm going to be talking about a different type of giving than that. Um, I'm going to be speaking a little bit later from Galatians 6, which talks about how we are to share our burdens with each other. Um, and we already, Barry mentioned that this morning, how everybody participated and how he appreciated the people in the church. And that's more of the, t the type of giving that I want to be talking about this morning. I looked on the internet trying to find a joke about giving. And I didn't really find anything, but I did find a story about this guy who was, his wife says, Dear, could you hand me my chapstick for my lips? And he says, I accidentally handed her a glue stick and she hasn't talked to me since. Earlier this week, I had sent a message to a few pastor friends in Cuba told, telling them that I wanted to be speaking on the topic of giving from Galatians 6 and if they had any suggestions for me. Um, the one pastor, I think, was a little concerned and he told me, was making sure that I wasn't giving the impression that our salvation is based on giving. It isn't. Our salvation is based on what Christ did for us and not what our actions are. And as I was preparing what I was going to say today, I became more and more convinced of the importance of the type of giving that I'm going to be talking about and participating and helping others within our own church community and others ar around us. There is a verse from James chapter 1, and it talks about pure religion. At one time I would have thought there isn't such a thing as pure religion. This verse says, from James 1.27, Religion that our God Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And so that's what I want to be speaking about, is how we can help each other. Um, so I'm trying to, Curtis had asked if I would share a little bit about that and also share about my recent trip to Cuba. So I'm going to start by showing some pictures from Cuba. Some of them are just uh, for fun pictures and some more on the topic of how 
we as believers can help each other and share each other's burdens. So, th- this is just a typical street in Cuba. A lot, a lot of, a lot of pictures like this. This was early in the morning before there was much going on. But normally, streets like this, you'll see them filled with bicycle taxis, horse-drawn carriages, and so on, and some automobiles also. The next picture is Clay comes out as a live gecko on his ear. Um, and he is married to Hochi last summer, the next picture. Ho- Hochi is, she adopted me as her grandfather. And last summer, Cheryl and I went to her wedding. I had the honor of bringing her to the, to the wedding ceremony as her grandfather. Um, the next picture. This is going into a store in Cuba. Um, you hand in your list of what you want. The guy behind the counter measures out a pound of beans, a little bit of oil there, a pound of sugar, and so on. And I think I mentioned this in church a few weeks ago, but the lady I went with to this store, uh, they were allowed five eggs for the month. And so that was on her list also. Is there were three people in her family, and she got 15 eggs, and that had to last them for the whole month. Uh, the next picture. This is how you cut grass in Cuba. I didn't see any lawnmowers, but I did see people with machetes cutting grass. Uh, a lot of these people, he, this particular fellow is disabled. He can't speak. And a lot of the disabled people, they get uh, allowance, I guess, from the government, which is uh, seven Cuban dollars a month. That's about ten Canadian dollars a month is what they get to live on. And I think what he made an extra three dollars a month for cutting grass. Uh, the next picture. Uh, this is who I really love in Cuba: is the kids. The, the next picture is just in a couple more kids. And the next picture, this is Dr. Lomi, and I spent the first couple nights at her house, her and her husband, um, and the one day there. We had, she had asked if I could bring one thing and a a bottle of perfume, and uh, you'll see deodorant here. People in Cuba, that's one thing that everybody asks for almost is, is, is deodorant. Uh, we took from the church here, somebody had donated lots of different bandages. Uh, somebody else had donated Tylenol and different things. Um, back here, you can't see it, but there was a laptop that somebody had given for her church. And I think somebody here will recognize the purse that somebody had given. <laughs> um... Dr. Lomi, um, she, besides being a doctor, she has a church in her house, and she does ministry to children's uh, hospital with sick children. She does prison ministry. Um, She contacted me a few days ago saying on Friday of last week, she had worked a 24-hour shift, and that's what they do there, the doctors, for some reason. They work 24-hour shifts. And she had a 7-year-old child that was brought into her hospital um, and was very sick and dying. And she was, so she worked a 24-hour shift Friday, had that child there. Um, on Saturday, she was there with the family, and the 7-year-old from her church died. Um... On Monday, she had about 70 people in her home from the family and church uh, mourning for the... And so she looked after people on Monday. On Wednesday, she was back at work doing another 24-hour shift. And she says, I am emotionally burnt out physically, emotionally, and spiritually. If you could pray for me. So I said that I'm speaking on Sunday about sharing each other's burdens, and if you could remember her in prayer this week, please. Uh, the next picture. These are some people from her church. 
Um, they were there that day when I was there. Um, and I think this is fairly typical of how things are in Cuba. Uh, Dr. Lomi, who is here, she made a meal and four people sat down at the table, myself and three others. Um, I said, how come the others aren't eating? They're all sitting around the living room. And they said, well, we're going to feed you first, and then we'll wash the place, and then four more people will eat. Uh, the next picture. Um, these are nieces of Dr. Lomi, actually. And it, I met her, actually, because I had met her brother first, who is the pastor of a church in a different town. He and so it's their dad who I originally was chatting with, and he happened to be in Canada at the time. Doc, Dr. Lomi uh, took me to meet these two girls, who was the daughters of the, of the pastor that was in Canada at the time. Um, she wanted to come back to Canada with me in my suitcase. <laughs> um, there was something else I was going to say about them, but I forget what it was. Go on to the next picture. Um, the next day, Hochi, who I had showed earlier with the alligator on her neck, her, her family, her mom and dad and her husband came to pick me up, uh, and we went to a town called El Kizer, and they had a, a welcome bread service in the evening. And you can go on to the next picture. Uh, they, they had people come up and reading poems and doing dramas and, and so on. Um, and an amazing thing about uh, this was um, with Ho Chi, she sang a song and they invited her to come back on Sunday to sing a song. Uh, and Ho Chi had never, okay, so we hadn't planned on going back Sunday, we did. On Sunday, she, uh, we decided to go back and she stood up to sing a song and she started talking as if she's going to introduce the song and she started talking and talking, and a few minutes gone, went by, and she started getting more animated, and, and she was preaching, and her dad said, what's happening to our daughter? She had never preached in her life before. She hadn't gone there expecting to preach, and she preached for over half an hour. The people on the church, uh, at least half of them were on their knees weeping as she's preaching, and she said just, the Holy Spirit came over her, and, and she spoke. Um, the next picture. This is Yadira. The she's a pastor of that church, and her husband are also pastors. Before I went, I asked them, "Do you have? Do you and your husband have a study Bible?" And she said, "No." And I said, "Well, what's your Bible like?" And she said, "Well, my Bible is really worn out." So somebody from our church donated uh, Charles Spurgeon's study Bible that she's getting here. Before I went to Cuba, I didn't know if she would know who Charles Spurgeon was, so I, I didn't tell her she was getting a Bible. I just said, do you know who Charles Spurgeon is? And she says, well, Charles Spurgeon, of course. She says, I've only got a few books in my library, but one of, one of my heroes of faith is Charles Spurgeon, and I've studied about him. And so she happened, the person from our church didn't know this, but they had bought a Charles Spurgeon Bible in Spanish for her. Uh, the next one. Um, I went to a wedding there on Saturday. This is Pastor Leonis from Havana. And the next picture, I'll talk about Pastor Leonis on another picture, but... Um, some of the things we had donated, I had taken lots of clothes 
uh, medicines for different people. Another thing that I showed uh, uh, that was on the table I didn't point out was the stethoscope for Dr. Lomi. Somebody had bought a really nice stethoscope for her. Um, what this girl has on here is little earrings that we had taken and given a lot of the girls. We've given also, also a lot of necklaces and different things like that, jewelry for people. The next picture. Um, this on Sunday morning, we had been at this church Thursday night. We came back Sunday morning. This lady, well, different people had come up to me showing me that they're wearing clothes that I had left at the church on Thursday. And this lady came up to me, and she had tears in her eyes, and she pulled out her strap and says, Gracias, gracias, gracias. The next picture, this is Pastor Leone from Havana. Um, if you look in the background of this house, you can see right through the walls. There was a couple that lived in this house. They had a baby a couple weeks ago, and he was there trying to fix up their house for them a little bit and putting up cardboard on the walls just to help keep the wind out. So the people in Cuba are helping each other, and they appreciate the help that we have given them. Uh, Galatians 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, and you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the Word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Can you put verse 1 back up there? If someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. So the first, the first verse in Galatians is talking about our responsibility to each other and, and spiritually, that we are to look out for each other uh, spiritually. And then verse five, uh, 2 to 5, if you have them handy there, carry each other's burdens. And the next one, if anyone thinks they are something when they're not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. And take, then they take pride in themselves without comparing themselves to someone else. So we should, we should bear each other's burdens. And then uh, maybe just go to verse 9. Nevertheless, the one who receives instructions in the Word... Is that nine? The second one from the last should be, I think. Yeah, let us not be weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So that's doing good to each other as believers. When I asked uh, people for suggestions in Cuba, a couple different pastors, uh, about this topic of giving, 
And, and I told him I wanted to mention specifically from Galatians 6 about doing good to each other. Two different pastors said, well, you have to mention the Good Samaritan. And this, this comes basically directly from one of the pastors saying there's, there's four points that you should mention. And so I'm just going to read exactly what they wrote. Point number one is do not give based on if you think if you think the person is worthy or not, we must give to the one who needs. And they also said to point out that the, the Jew and the Samaritan were not friends with each other. He, the, the Samaritan gave to the Jew even though they were basically enemies with each other. And the second point was let God interrupt your plans and your agenda. The Samaritan had plans, was going somewhere, and was suddenly interrupted. Three is don't overthink your giving. Don't delay. Take advantage of the moment and the opportunity. Tomorrow often is too late. If you are needed, be attentive in the moment. And fourth point was don't wait until you have enough. Give what you have, and it is enough for the person lacking. The Samaritan gave what he had at, at the time, making a bandage from his own clothes, some oil that he had, and his animal to carry the wounded person, because that is what he had. father took his son for a long walk in the woods. He carried the child on his shoulders for a long time, and then he put the boy down, and he told him he'd have to walk the rest of the way. The little boy started to cry because he was too tired to go even one more step. So the father took a stick, he cleaned it so there's no splinters, and when he finished, he said, look, my son. You have a horse to take you home. Delighted, the little boy got on his horse and he happily arrived at the, at the house. At home, he continued riding his horse around the garden until it was time to bathe and go to bed. And sometimes, our father takes us and sometimes he lets us walk. Many times we think we can no longer continue, and when someone who has when someone who has been moved by him offers us a horse, an idea, a promise, a new song, love, an intercessory prayer, or he meets us in some other way, but on that speed we reach our goal. Do you need a horse? Is, is a brother in need of a horse? Let us offer it with tenderness as we remember our own, in tenderness as we remember our own tiredness, because that makes all the difference for a little brother. From Matthew. And I think it was when I was reading these verses that it, it, I was really impressed uh, with the importance of us, of our giving to each other and those around us. So these verses are, when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. And all the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, 
and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we, when did we see you a stranger invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will, the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. A verse from Acts 20, verse 35, says, In everything I did, I showed you by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, who said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And... In closing, one more verse from Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse seven. Each of you should give what you have decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I'm just going to pray, and then the worship team will come back up. God, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be here this morning. We thank you for the opportunities you give us to serve each other. And we just ask that in this coming year that you will make us all aware of the people around us in need and give us the heart to help them. I ask this in your name.